First Vice President says, as elected officials, we need to be careful in what we are doing. Minister of Tayat gives update on keeping the community of St. Martin informed. And Minister of Education pays visit to the Oranus home. Those are the headlines for Monday, August 10th, 2020. Good evening, viewers. This is FXM Daily News. I am Valerie Van Putten, thanking you so much for joining me this evening. And as usual, we have a packed newscast for you, so let's get started. In our first story, Minister of Education, Dr. Anders Rodolf Samuel, paid a visit to the Oranje School on Front Street on Monday morning. The visit was about the new school year, and even though schools have reopened, it is now online learning. Also joining the minister was the PTF president, vice president, rather, Jacqueline Gums, who explained what mechanisms have been put in place to ensure the continuous learning of the students. Today, indeed, is the start of the new school year. The school year has begun, but it has begun online. For that reason, we do not have a whole set of students, but we have the communication that starts to make place between the students and the school in regards to distance learning. And I do hope that everything goes well. We do not expect on the first day that you will get everyone, but gradually between the, the day, the first day, the second day, the third day, the school will be able to be in touch with all the children and to be able to give them their schedule, make arrangements with them to pick up their books if those things are necessary, and that the educating can, con can commence what mechanism have been put in place to ensure a smooth, continuous learning of students? Okay, this morning we have the teachers coming in to pick up, to pick up their iPads so they can begin with their online learning. Last week they already collected their class list and the telephone numbers from the students so they can get connected and make that um, connection with the parents via WhatsApp and get them online so they can begin the online learning. Mm. Approximately how many students were you looking forward to welcoming during this year's um, school year? Approximately 275. Mm. You made mention of the iPod teachers have been picking up, but what about your students, especially those in kindergarten who would would start school for a very first time. Okay, what we wanted to do and what we are going to do, we're going to have four um, parents come in per day just to meet and greet every 30 minutes for the rest of this week, starting from tomorrow. They can come in with their parents, adhering to the social distancing rule, and wearing a mask so they can meet their teacher. We're going to do it with group one and group two the group one and group two students, because those are the little ones. So we want the parents to get to meet the teacher and make it a bit more easier for them. The agreement I have with the CEO of Telem is that today, Monday morning, he would send someone to each one of the public schools to make sure that they have internet connections and the person will walk with a device that will be able to, to, to have the connection immediately. The follow-up will then be after the school have determined with their assessment which students are not connected, this same device can then be used in order to help students who are not connected and didn't have internet be connected. Have you been able to get database as to how many students will in fact be needing devices? We do have figures that we, we have obtained in March, but we know that these first, this first week of school will give us other, other figures that are for now, and with those figures, we will know how we will move forward. And in other news at this time, Minister of Tayat, the Honorable Aludmila de Weaver, speaking on the program moving forward on Friday evening last, gave an update on keeping the community of St. Martin informed about the latest developments and the COVID-19 containment, mitigation, and response measures. Part of the process to keep the community of St. Martin informed about the latest developments 
and the government's COVID-19 containment, mitigation, and response measures. A ministerial regulation, specifically the Regulation on Economic Activity Measures COVID-19, was signed today by me and the Minister of ASA, the Honorable Richard Ponifleck, on hygiene measures to protect public health when in connection with the control of COVID-19. Due to the fact that persons are not sufficiently voluntarily abiding by the safety precautions implemented, government took the decision to enforce the safety measures to help flatten the curve and ensure everybody abides by the safety measures as it pertains to sanitation, masks, and social distancing. To do so, the ministers of VSA and myself signed that regulation, ministerial regulation, to be able to enforce the following safety measures by limiting the opening hours for a specific number of business sectors, obligation for businesses and employers, obligations for the public when they visit businesses and penalties. Under the authority of TEA, it is forbidden to have premises open to the public between the hours of 12 a.m. midnight and 6 a.m., which shall include the following establishments, bars, nightclubs, discotheques, restaurants, hotel bars, casinos, rooms rented for meetings, events, and parties. The prohibition referred to, as just mentioned, shall not apply to hotels and lodgings as long as it concerns their own guests and staff. Any violation of the business hours is punishable with four months detention or a fine of 5,000 Antillian guilders. Meanwhile, Minister of Public Health, VSA, the Honorable Richard Panafleck, who was also on the program, sent out sympathies to the family and friends of the latest COVID-related death. The minister said, however, that the people are spreading the virus given the numbers. Um, regretfully, we had to count another death that passed away to COVID-related consequences. My sympathy, strength, go to the family of the deceased. The current number of infected persons with COVID-19 virus is alarming to say the least. The people are spreading the virus given the number of infected. You can only conclude that people are too close to each other or have too much physical contact or are not adhering to the sanitation. Since that is not sufficiently done by the population itself, government had to take the decision to mitigate all what is necessary to flatten the curve and bring back some kind of relief in the spike that's taking place right now. In doing so, together with the Minister of TIA, the Minister of VSA signed the ministerial regulations to be able to enforce safety measures. The regulation puts in place stricter opening hours for limited businesses, obligations for businesses, employers, obligations for the public when they visit businesses and penalties. As of today, it's mandatory for the public to wear a mask in source or businesses of any kind if social distancing is not possible. And with the increase of COVID cases on the island, head of the CPS epidemiologist, Ava Lisa de Weaver, talking on the program moving forward, explained the three main classifications. She said that the current guidelines that are being used by CPS comes from the WHO, the CDC, the REDM, and the European Center for Disease Prevention and Control. For every positive case that CPS receives, we let the public know the status of each case. There are three main classifications, active, recovered, or deceased. An active case is defined as a positive case that CPS is currently monitoring. The number of active cases will fluctuate as new cases are confirmed, recovered, or deceased. In other words, if someone recovers, the number of active cases will decrease. And if, if a new case is identified, the number will increase. A recovered case is defined as a case that is no longer showing signs or symptoms of active infection. The current guidelines we use at CPS 
for a recovered case are adapted from the World Health Organization, the U.S. Centers for Disease Control, the National Institute for Health and Environment, or the RAVM, and the European Center for Disease Prevention and Control. So from the start of the epidemic, the total number of confirmed or positive cases of COVID-19 currently stands at 177. CPS is currently monitoring 74 active cases. Of those active cases, four are currently hospitalized and 70 are in isolation at home. There are also 77 persons in quarantine. From the start of the outbreak in March, 86 persons have recovered. In terms of deaths, there, in terms of deaths from the onset of the epidemic to date, we now stand at 17. This is up one from yesterday's count. And still to come, Councillor on Friends St. Martin says he was hoping to get the barricade removed at Saturday's protest. So we'll have the details of that story and much more when SXM Daily News returns. GEBE has been faithfully serving the communities of St. Martin, powering your home and our economy. Come rain or shine, our qualified team of professionals are working hard 24 hours a day to provide you and your family with safe, reliable electricity and water. We use the latest technologies and test our products daily to maintain the highest international standards. Our friendly staff is always there to assist you, whether in person, over the phone, or online. We are committed to constantly improving our products and services, making them more efficient, effective, and environmentally friendly to serve you better today and our next generation of clients tomorrow. GEBE, -E, powering a brighter future. Our friend Mega Wadi is here with tips to save you energy. One, turn your air code temperature up. Two, use a ceiling fan instead. Three, buy energy saving products. Save some green with NVGEBE. Welcome back, viewers. And as we continue now with news, this item out of French, St. Martin. A number of protesters held a demonstration on Saturday morning in Bellevue demanding Prefet Delugue Sylvie for share to reopen the border immediately and return to discussions with the Dutch side government for a collaborative approach to managing the crisis. They called for a reinforcement of health measures on the entire territory to curb the upsurge in coronavirus cases. The turnout was below expectation. Some 60 persons from both sides of the island, indicative perhaps of a population wary of protesting against successive injustices on the French side. But as organizer Lenny Washington often points out at these demonstrations, it's not about quantity that matters, it's about quality. The main grievance in the organizer's preamble was against the prefect taking the unilateral decision to close the symbolic border in defiance of the Treaty of Concordia, which has guaranteed for 372 years the free movement of people on our territory. Louis Mussington is the leader of the MJP party and a counselor on French St. Martin. Today we were hoping to meet with her, but I just learned from the, the chief of the gendarmerie that uh, she's off island. Uh, I don't know if it was planned, as what, if it was sorry, if it was a planned trip or if it was a sudden decision to leave the island. Uh, what we were hoping is that she, we were, we were able to get her here and to discuss with her to let her know, in no uncertain terms, that we want the, uh, the, the, the barricade removed today, uh, and then she would have to now seek uh, partnership with the southern side, get back because I understand that she's not, she was not receiving any calls from the Prime Minister on the south. So that they, we were saying that we would tell her plainly it's urgent that they re-establish contact and they continue the useful and necessary important dialogue between both authorities so that we could establish a clear plan of action as to how we are combating the, 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 the virus in itself yeah. and not how we are flexing our muscles to say that I'm the boss. Okay, that is something that we have, we want to, 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 to make clear. Uh, okay, she's not there, so we have to know, we, 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 we strategize, okay? But at least uh, I want to be grateful to all those who came uh, from the south, from the northern side that sh showed up. 
It's important that they did that because despite of the, the smear campaign that was uh, properly orchestrated to try to kill this effort, you know, uh, people still see it necessary to be here. With the clear understanding that yes, we got the crisis on, on, uh, on hand that we have to deal with in a very responsible manner. And I just learned that even on the northern side, the number of cases have uh, increased by 10. I just learned that, get information and I exchange with the commander. So it says that really that we cannot play with the virus really. And speaking at the demonstration on Saturday, former president of the Collectivité, Mr. Alan Richardson, wants to know if the closing of the border can actually stop the virus. The virus is circulating. We see the figures. The figures are not very pretty. But do you believe that this here, plus the one in French Quarter, stops the virus? No. So this cannot be the measure to be a problem. That there be a concerted effort between both sides to mitigate the spreading of the virus with masks, with curfew, with all of the other measures, yes. But this, no. Many businesses, I know businesses in French Quarter, I know businesses on this side, ever since these control are uh, um, being carried out, as a matter of fact, there's a restaurant in French Quarter which will have to close because 90% of its clientele come from the southern side. I have a daughter that has a snack in French Quarter and she have already seen more than 50% of drop of her business because the customers from uh, Dutch Quarter and so on cannot come. So it is unacceptable, unacceptable what is being done that is want to be sold to us as a means of controlling the spreading of the virus. So again, I want to encourage each and every one and I want our authorities, prefect and the collectivity to get to the table in partnership with the southern side to find the real measures. And also speaking on the border closure, First Vice President of the Collectivité, Valerie Damaso, says that the Minister and Council of Ministers, along with the Prefet, will bring forth the reality of the territory and how we need to be careful with certain things and also make propositions. The First Vice President says, as elected officials, we need to be careful in what we are doing. She was at the time speaking this morning on SOS radio station 95.9 FM. Minister and her minister, um, council of ministers, along with the prefect, we bring forward the reality of the territory, explain how we need to be careful with certain things, and also make propositions. Yeah. Now, I'm hearing with the, the, the whole border issue of a, a march or however they want to turn and twist it. As elected officials, we need to be careful with what we're doing. Not the last territorial council meeting, but the one prior. We, after the Territorial Council points was over, we had what we call a general commission. So which means it's the um, weak loop, which mm. means it's no longer live and so yeah. forth. And all the elected officials, oppositions at majority, stayed and we had a discussion on the border issue. Where um, uh, Mr. President uh, revealed that the prefecture gave us, um, sent a letter asking us if we want to take a derogation, derogation from the fact that as a French territory, we were um, not allowed to have Americans on the territory. So there you could have said, well, I'm going to derogate from it, which means you accept it to uh, accept Americans on the territory. Or, or you're not accepting. Or you're not. Yeah, exactly. Which the decision was to say that we're not going to derogate. Why? When you do so, it's also telling you, that the, the financial burden that comes with it, that layers and all of this part that we don't control, we never have been controlling, that health hazard, that health burden, um, financial burden and so forth, that is registered no way in our financials. Um, you're saying today that you're also taking that responsibility. Correct. And how do you take that responsibility when you don't even have the means to do what you're responsible for? So everyone opposition and majority decided not to derogate How meaning we, meaning to accept american tourists yeah said that we're not accepting um, american tourists oh we the, we're not hold on hold on let's come back on yes. this the whole congo said we're not, not accepting america because again i'm going to repeat the amount of derogation means that you're going contrary to the text the law that mm. is opposed upon you yeah. and the law that is opposed upon you is to say you cannot as a french territory <coughs> accept americans Okay. So you have the choice now to say that you're going to derogate, I, I hope that's the right translation, um, to um, say, you know what, I'm going against what you say, so I want to receive. So you're saying that the whole council decided not to accept American terms. Exactly. Because that's not the idea that I'm hearing out there so today. Th this is why I'm saying, again, now, again, when we take that decision together, we wrote back a letter 
as the Commission General or the elected official stating that we're not. And again, it's not that we didn't see it fit, we didn't see the importance and so forth, but you can The burden that, that comes with it. Exactly. So. so, at the end of the day, for an elected official to even decide to say that we're going to go, go march or we're going to go do, that you're totally opposing the power in which people give you in your hand. And now turning to our weather forecast for August the 10th, 2020. Showers and thunderstorms associated with a tropical wave and broad area of low pressure located over the eastern Atlantic has changed little in organization since yesterday. Environmental conditions are expected to be conducive for additional development and it is possible for a tropical depression to form during the next day or two as the system moves westward at 10 to 50 miles per hour. However, conditions are forecast to become less conducive for development by the end of the week. Formation chance through 48 hours, medium, 60%. Formation chance through five days, medium, 60%. So the outlook through Wednesday midday, partly cloudy with brief showers possible. And now let's turn to your three day forecast. And still to come, St. Martin Medical Center reminds public to call CPS or your house doctor when experiencing COVID-19 symptoms. We'll have the details to that story and more when SSM Daily News returns. Make use of web mobile banking with easy access and direct usage of face recognition, PIN code, or fingerprint. Download WID Mobile Banking app and make your transaction from anywhere at any time. For more information, visit wib-bank.net forward slash quick dash login. Welcome back viewers. And as we continue now with more news for you this evening, Fearing that more employees may be infected with the COVID-19 virus at the telecommunications company Telem, the telecommunication union feels that the island is in a bigger outbreak than the first time and that the work from home order which was implemented should be reinstated. In an internal communique from Mr. Kendall Dupersoy, CEO of Telem Group of Companies, to the staff, the CEO addressed a falsehood in their union chat where the members are requesting that staff work from home as there is at least one infected employee. As was stated, Mr. Duprosoy said that all is being done to make the workplace safer and he has not threatened anybody. He expounds. I just got a message that was forwarded to me. Um, I, I'm assuming that it was in your uh, union chat, the union members chat. For you to know which message I'm talking about, I'm going to read the message. There all again, I am being threatened that I just pulled my last string because I'm informing you all to keep yourself safe. This morning, several members came out to the urgent meeting to hear what they must do since the management of the Telem don't have their well-being at heart. They were informed that if you don't feel safe in the building, stay home and go to your doctor and explain your doctor what is going on. I, the building from Telem. That we have an infected employee, then the company has not communicated nor done nothing to keep the rest of the employees safe. Your doctor will put you home for 14 days. And now I'm being targeted for looking for all protection by the CEO. I just pulled my last string, he said. I will continue informing you all accordingly with or without threats. Keep yourself safe. Now, the first thing is, everybody should, let's be fair. Telem has done a whole lot of things to try to make the working environment safer. When the numbers were high, we let people work from home half-half to try to keep the operations running. So for you to say that we haven't done anything that is wrong, in this specific case, the person has been out since last week. When we were informed as management of the positive test of the employee, it, the employee it was four or five days the employee had not been in the building. So even if he was in the building last week, by now, 
all the virus would have been dis dissipated, so it, it wouldn't affect you now. However, based on the CPS, if you were in contact with him while he was here, we would have to do some contact tracing to make sure that you're not sick. And that is what was, um, how I say, relayed to the employee. Now, everybody have a right to privacy. So you're not going to go blasting it all over the place. I mean, everybody knows who it is by now, but, you know, you still shouldn't do that really. You know, it's not, it's not proper to do something like that. So to say that, you know, we don't want to keep the employees safe, I think it's an exaggeration. Secondly, last time I checked, I am the CEO. Now, as CEO and as a St. Martin, I have never heard the term pull my last string. I don't know what the person get that from, but it's not something I would say. It's just not, I don't even know that term when it comes to anything. And as we continue now, St. Martin Medical Center, the SMMC, hereby reminds the public that persons experiencing non-urgent COVID-19 symptoms should contact their house doctor or Collective Prevention Services, CPS, for instructions prior to coming to the hospital. Since the start of the COVID-19 pandemic, the medical center has put protocols in place to prevent the transmission of COVID-19 to other patients and staff within the hospital. These protocols include a mandatory COVID-19 triage questionnaire at all entry points, which include questions such as if the patient is experiencing any COVID-19 symptoms, if they have recently traveled, and if they have been in contact with anyone who has been confirmed as having COVID-19. Now, despite these protocols, the medical center has seen an increase in non-urgent patients attempting to visit the emergency room and the outpatient clinics requesting checkups to rule out COVID-19. Due to the recent uptick in cases on the island, we have had an increase of stable and asymptomatic patients coming to the hospital requesting a checkup to exclude COVID-19. And still to come, Coast Guard officers training reinitiated. And I'll have a detail to that story when SXM Daily News returns. And as we end this edition of SXM Daily News for you this evening, viewers, Coast Guard officers in training has been reinitiated. The Coast Guard officer training Basis Oplading Kustwacht Bok was reinitiated on August the 3rd, 2020. Last March, the training was postponed due to coronavirus outbreak. The students flew back to Curaçao in June 2020, and last Monday, the training was reinitiated. The students from Aruba, Curaçao, and St. Martin started with great enthusiasm and energy on their first assignment, a tough hike in the Drie Gebroeders area. The Drie Gebroeders are three hills in the rugged landscape of Curaçao. The youngsters got up very early last Monday and challenged the heat and the rugged terrain of the three hills until noon. In the coming weeks, the 18 students will receive the follow-up modules from the BOC. The entire week was a refreshment course of the first training weeks. These were the modules that followed in January and February of 2020. And with that, viewers, we've come to the end of this edition of SXM Daily News for this evening. Thanking you for joining me. I am Valerie Van Putten. And just a reminder that this and other programs are available online simply log on to stmartinmediacenter.com for viewing. And on behalf of the SXM Daily News team, we thank you for watching and plan on meeting you right back here again tomorrow. <laughs>